Hey guys, it's Shelby. Today's video comes out of a little bit of a weird mood swing. I woke up this morning, felt like my period was gonna start. It did. So then in attempts to make myself feel a little bit better about, you know, myself. I did my hair, used my sister's curling iron to curl my hair. What do we think? But obviously that didn't work because the video I chose to film today is ways we are destroying the planet every day. <laughs> Brought to you by my period. Today's video is going to focus on things that we either use or do every single day that have a pretty massive impact on the planet. I have been trying to talk more and more about how everything is not our responsibility as individuals. We are victims of the system. We are not to blame. But as someone who believes that our actions can change things all around the world, these are some things that I think we should start thinking about, change our habits, that sort of stuff. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we use or do every single day is use a phone. I have tried for years for my phone not to be the first thing I think of or touch or use when I wake up, but most days I do it anyway. It is instinctual, it is a bit of a habit, and also a bit of an addiction. We've seen from several studies that people are not only addicted to social media, but the feeling of getting on social media and having like the dopamine release from scrolling or from seeing notifications, etc. The reason I bring up our phones is because they have a massive environmental footprint and I think it's something that a lot of people don't realize or think about. According to the American Ceramic Society, they did a study and found with an iPhone 6, it takes 295 pounds of raw materials to make this little, this little piece of technology. Not only do these little devices take a hell of a lot of natural resources to make, but a lot of those natural resources are mined in ways that have serious human rights violations, such as child labor, um, being underpaid, put in unsafe working conditions. There's a lot that goes into it with the minerals and materials that go into making technology today. And because of that, it's not something I wanna vote for with my dollar. I don't wanna give my money to the brand that makes this to tell them, hey, I'm fine with this. Give me more of this. I also have been speaking out against Apple and other large corporations who make phones for years, and I'm not going to stop. I think that boycotting a brand is a good thing, but boycotting in silence is not nearly as important as reaching out to the brands and telling them you want to see them do better. You want to see them have stricter standards for human rights. You want to see them use more recycled materials to have better, more efficient take back programs. I've been speaking about those things publicly for a very, very long time in hopes to make a change. I also, you know, for what it is, Apple is a giant conglomerate brand that is pretty much unstoppable, but I always make it a priority to email them with my concerns of how I think they can be doing better. And I think that more and more people asking them to do that over the years has made a difference because some of their phones that they've launched recently are using recycled aluminum, which is very exciting to see them, I was gonna say on the right track, but like <laughs> it's a multi-billion dollar corporation. But like I said, since I don't wanna give my money to these giant corporations and vote for more of their destruction, I choose to purchase all of my tech second hand. My phone, my laptop, my iPad, my camera, everything I use for this YouTube channel has been bought second hand and that's why I was super excited when Trademore wanted to partner with me on this video. So Trademore, if you guys haven't heard me talk about them before, is a great place to get second hand not only phones but iPads, Apple Watches, all that sort of stuff. They have a 30 point inspection process for quality, reliability, and functionality. All the devices that are sold on Trademore receive a 100% inspection score from this 30 point inspection. And if you're in a pinch like I was when I needed a new phone when my last one bit the dust, they have really quick shipping, which helps not have to impulse buy and give your money to non-sustainable brands. They do also purchase old devices, which hopefully you are using your devices until they absolutely can't be used anymore. That is the most sustainable option. And if you do, Trademore also has recycling information on their website. You just choose the state that you live in and they'll direct you to the page to help you find your best recycling option for your device. I do get questions pretty often or anytime I bring up secondhand tech. So Trademore is definitely the place to go. You can check them out at the link in the top of the description. I definitely think that you can trust them. And uh, let's move on to some other things that we do every day that destroy the planet. If we're going in order of like a daily routine, you wake up, look at your phone, and then what do you do? Do you eat breakfast? <laughs> Food is something that I often avoid talking about on this channel because 
we absolutely need food to live. And in a lot of cases, you are literally only able to do as much as what is available to you locally. Whether you have a bulk shop at all right now, because I know in some places they're still not open post COVID, whether you have a bulk shop, but they won't let you bring your own containers, whether you have absolutely no options for bulk at all, which is the majority of people in the United States. When it comes to food, I understand as someone who is striving to live a zero waste lifestyle, food is definitely an area where you probably create the most waste, myself included. But when I say things that we're doing every day to destroy the planet, I'm not talking about plastic waste. And I think that the conversation should go far beyond what solid waste we're producing because there are so many ways we are hurting the planet other than just that. And that are more impactful than that. Hence a recent video I made, check it out here. And some of these ways are indeed eating animal products and very specifically beef. Every time I talk about a plant-based diet or what I personally like to refer to as a climatarian diet, I always get pushback of certain people telling me that animal products can be sustainable or are needed to sustain life or in certain scenarios, people can't eat a plant-based diet. And to all of that, I say, okay, fine, but beef is incredibly unsustainable point blank period from a resource standpoint. The way that we currently are consuming cows in this world is not sustainable long-term in the way that when they are in confined animal feedlots, we are feeding them grain that is incredibly resource intensive to grow. The waste that they produce from those confined animal feedlots that end up in our waterways and in our oceans and are causing dead zones. Also have a video all about that. I'll link it up here for you. But the argument that really bothers me is when people say, well, what about grass fed beef? It is still literally unsustainable. In order to give a cow as much land as they would need to eat to survive and grow to be sold as a meat product, the amount of sheer land it would take to do that is not possible. Therefore, if you're an average American and you eat quite a bit of beef every single week, it's completely unsustainable and it's something that you're doing on a daily basis. But when I say that something that we do every single day that's unsustainable and I say food, I don't just mean animal products. I also mean uh, throwing food in landfills. So many people are putting food into landfills thinking that it's going to break down when in reality food doesn't really break down in landfills because it doesn't have the proper conditions it needs to actually turn back into soil. That is why composting is a thing. But even if food did break down somehow by some miracle in a landfill, we wouldn't be able to recover that, right? So we're literally just burying nutrients that we desperately need for our soils in landfills with plastic and toxic chemicals and all sorts of stuff that we can't recover to give back to our earth. We're literally growing things from the land and throwing them in a hole in the ground where we'll never be able to recover those things to give back to the land. We could really learn a thing or two from indigenous cultures who kind of already figured this stuff out. You know what I mean? Tell me if you don't know someone who throws away food every single day, who isn't sorting their recycling from their compost and all that sort of stuff. And on that note, that's actually the next thing I wanted to talk about, things that people do that are hurting the planet, is sending perfectly recyclable materials to landfill as well. Tell me you don't know someone who does this because personally back in my hometown where I grew up, my mom has plenty of land to have a compost but she doesn't. She also, I think now finally has the option of recycling at her home. She always had the option of taking recycling somewhere, but she never did. She sends all of these materials that we took from the earth, she used them and then she sent them to a hole in the earth either to never be recovered or someday when we literally run out of materials, some scientists and engineers along the way are going to have to figure out how to get those resources that we desperately need out of the landfills. If you are someone who is watching this video, likely you already have a pretty good understanding of sustainability and why sorting waste from recycling, from food waste, all that sort of stuff is so important. But I think something that we should also start to focus on, some environmentalists need to like branch out into, are educating people like the people from my small town. 
And honestly, I think there's value in just being representative in those communities and teaching your everyday life in those communities. And so that's why often when people ask me why I still live in Texas, that's a, a pretty significant part of the reason why I feel like my presence here can actually make a change in those people's lives who literally wouldn't be introduced to these ideas otherwise. Even recyclable materials that are going to landfill are valuable resources. Aluminum cans, even in a lot of cases, plastic. I know it's not the most recyclable material, but it can be recycled into other things that are longer lasting. Things I've seen plastic bottles turned into like clothing, um, but also like park benches and just stuff like that, ways to use those materials as to not make those things out of new virgin materials and to save things from just going to a landfill. The next thing that I wrote down is being politically inactive. And this is really uh, something I, like I said, I'm getting more into, something I wanna talk about more. Us being politically inactive, especially when it comes to environmental crises and climate change, it only benefits the multi-billion dollar corporations. It only benefits the politicians who keep getting elected who are paid by those people. Them making us feel like we can't make a difference is the reason that they continue to stay in power. By us buying into that narrative and being completely inactive politically, locally, in our communities, all that sort of stuff is really a disservice to the planet and the things that we care about. And look, I am seriously an introverted person. I have social anxiety. I'm learning a few new things recently in therapy about other neurodivergencies that I have that lead to me not being a good activist. And not everyone can be. And I do not assume that everyone who wants to live a little bit more sustainably also wants to be politically active. I don't think we all want to be or can be activists. But I think that feeling completely unable to use our voice and our vote and our influence, honestly, over our communities, our ability to not do those things is a disservice to the planet. And since there's a, a pretty sizable group of us doing this in activity, the small group of people are continuing to destroy the planet. And so as we're over here being politically inactive, it results in destroying the planet. And honestly, being politically active does not have to be something that is this huge thing where you have to like be in politics and be a commissioner or a city council member and all that sort of stuff. Of course, those things are good and if it's a position or a skill that you have, go for it. But it can also be something as small as joining a local Facebook group that has to do with sustainability in your town or city. And when petitions come up, you sign them. When they need support to do something you know, that they're standing up for, you're there. When there's a protest, you show up. You know, Maybe once every other month or something. And if you can't give with your time, oftentimes giving with your money also helps in political endeavors. You know, There's a group in Texas that is actually pushing to get us a new recycling incentive. It's a little bit complicated to explain. I'll link it below on my uh, blog post where you can go to find out how to write to businesses and corporations, all that good stuff. It'll be linked below. But there's an organization that was trying to get a proposition to help entice people to recycle. I thought it was a pretty good idea. And by giving money to that organization so that they had the ability to do more grounds, grassroots work, is another way to be politically active without having to expose yourself to people because you're an introvert. I really, really am very interested in talking more about this and I don't ever want to put so much responsibility on you to do everything because I don't, I don't think that's fair and personally in my life, that's just not how I live. But I think that being completely inactive and feeling just apathy towards uh, politics is adding to the destruction of our planet. So I didn't cover all the topics that I want to, but I think I went in depth on the ones that really matter to me and that I'm obviously quite passionate about. So if you wanna see another episode in the series, let me know in the comments. Also, love to hear your feedback on the topics of today's video. Also, just wanna give another huge thank you to Trademore for sponsoring this video. Absolutely love the idea of secondhand technology. Been talking about it for years. Check them out with the link at the top of the description. And remember, until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs but the world needs all the good that you can do. Bye guys.